Hi, so today we are continuing on um, in intimacy and how our lack of intimacy has defined us, has made us who we are. So today's scripture I want to discuss is Acts 8 from verse 19 to 24 when Peter and John went around laying their hands on people and they were baptized with the Holy Spirit. And there was a sorcerer by the name of Simon who wanted that power. He got saved but he wanted the Holy Spirit's power to lay his hands on people and um, they would then receive the Holy Spirit and then do the miracles that was being done. And he went to Peter and John and he offered them money and he asked them to please give him the gift he, he would buy. It. And Peter said the following. You have no part or share in this matter because your heart, your motive, your purpose is not right before God. So repent of this wickedness of yours and pray to the Lord that if possible that though that this thought of your heart may be forgiven you. For I see that you are provoked by bitterness and bought by sin. But Simon answered, Pray to the Lord for me, both of you, so that nothing of what you've said will come upon me. Excuse the dog barking. He barks at everything that walks past you. And the thing is, if you go back in time, what is the sin of our hearts? Now, <clears throat> the sin of the heart is pride and rebellion and lust and fornication and all these things. But where did it come in? This whole thing started when Satan wanted to put himself above God. Now, <clears throat> my daughter myself was talking about this yesterday. We were all born with this inside of us that we, we want that emotional connection. But through the gen generations, that emotional connection, that emotional intimacy that we wanted was broken. I think the only people that ever had a proper emotional connection with God was Adam and Eve. The rest of us will never, I think, understand what it is to walk with God, That how Adam and Eve walked with God. And we can now go back and blame our parents and we, we can do all these things. Yes, it was their responsibility to be better, to try better, to improve themselves. And But they did not know how. I mean, we were all born to parents that were not saved. And some of them really tried their best and the others just could not do it because of the things that happened in the past. And Brett Huddleston from America was at our church yesterday and he spoke about digital addiction and how dangerous it is. And it just came up to me that there is such a hole inside of you that you need to fill with the things of this world because you are taught that you should do that. I mean, parents want to live their lives through their children, through their children's achievement. You have to get a hundred on a test every time. You have to be a doctor, you have to be a lawyer, you have to be a teacher. 
and to to what end to to what um to whose benefit did god call you to be this that your parents wanted you to be god put gifts in all of us it is not the same as your parents it is not the same as your friends and to live somebody else's life you are basically stealing that person's gift that God gave them. And the thing is, what, what happens then is that sin then in, enters into your life because now it's fear, it's rejection, it's hatred, it's rebellion, it's, it, it's pride, it's all these things. But we need to turn around and go back to God and say, Lord, I'm sorry for allowing other people to dictate my life. Help me to be the person that you want me to be. To really be who you called me to be. When you created this earth, you put something inside of me and it needs to be used. There, there was a, 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 a seed planted, but this seed can't be used if it's not watered. And in Deuteronomy 30 verse 6 it says, And the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your descendants. That is, he will remove the desire to sin from your heart, so that you will love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul, so that you may live as a recipient of his blessing. We don't know what it is to love and be loved. We are grasping at straws. We are looking to people and things and digital and, and all these things, material things, when we should go and sit at God's feet and say, Lord, fill me with your love. Fill me. Fill my spirit till it, till it overflows. And Brett also said yesterday, he says, you know what, if you want to bring any change in children, the parents need to change. Now my children used to laugh at me when they were small and even today. When I see a naughty child, I say that the parents need to be smoked. The parents need to time out because they are allowing that. They are the reason that child is acting like that. There's no naughty child. But there's a parent behind that child that doesn't know how to deal with themselves, let alone with that child. Healing starts with you, not with your children. Heal yourself first. When my children were younger, I did everything I could because I knew I was lacking in helping them to understand themselves. I once told my children, you didn't come with a manual to say, listen, you like this and you like this and this is how I need to treat you. I don't know. And if you don't tell me how you want to be treated, how am I supposed to know? I can't. I don't know. It, this is trial and error. So please tell me. I am trying my best, but I'm only human. I make mistakes. There's a song, I think it's from Ori M, that says, I'm, I'm human, born to make mistakes. And it's the truth. And in our mistakes, we realize that we need God. I need God. I need Him today. This morning, I had to confess, Lord, I've backslidden. I need you. How much do you need God today? Are you going to fill yourself again today? 
with the things of the world instead of the things of your father who loves you so much. But you don't even love yourself as much as God loves you. And I am guilty of that. I don't know what love means. I don't know what it is to have a mother and a father who loved me unconditional. Their love was conditional. As long as I behaved, I was loved. As, and I couldn't behave. I wanted acceptance for who I was and I couldn't get it. So I was forced into a mold that I didn't fit in. And it was of no fault of my mother's or my father's. That was the way that they were brought up. But it is my responsibility now to break out of this mold, to ask the Holy Spirit to lead me every day. How do I break out of this mold? How do I become a better person? How do I become a better version of myself? It is to benefit myself. This is for me, for nobody else but me. Can you be a better person for yourself? Do you want to be a better person for yourself? I can sit here and I can do makeup videos and I can do product videos and I can do all of these things. For, for, for what? For what reason? For what reason do I want to do that? But I want to bring healing to myself. But in bringing healing to myself, I want to help you as well. Nothing you are going through is for yourself to the benefit of other people and to the kingdom of God. But start with you first. Start healing yourself first. Start being the person that you need to be, that you are not who your mother and your father says, who your, your family says you are, who society says you are. You are beautifully and wonderfully made fearfully made you are the temple of god what are you feeding the temple